Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the yet another episode of Dinner Guide. I am your host Chef Andy and today we are going to be playing with two definitely beautiful ingredients. We're going to be playing with some red wine. We're going to be playing with some beautiful beautiful beef fillet. So I'll start off by introducing the ingredients in front of us today. As I said we're going to keep it simple today but you're going to keep it glamorous. We're going to be working with some rosemary and some sage all fresh. We're going to be working also with some uh, mixed peppers, some oyster sauce, some teriyaki sauce, some black pepper, some salt, and of course our beef filet. We're also going to be working with some green beans, some olive oil, a nice beautiful glass of red wine, dry white red, and some, uh, be be some beef stock. So without further ado, we're just going to slide into a small commercial break, and when we come back, we're just going to go straight into it. See you then. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. For those who missed out on what we started with before our commercial break, we're going to be working with some beautiful beef fillet today. We're going to be working with some red wine, which we're going to turn into a jus and I'm going to show you how all that is done right here on our cooking show. So without further ado, I'm just going to get my pan ready to go now. Just going to have that going on very low heat. So first things first, we're going to start with the beef that's in front of us. So this is a nice chunk of beef filet. So this hasn't been cleaned, it's just been cut. So I'm just going to show you the basics of how to clean a filet really well. So first things first, a very sharp knife, preferably the biggest one you have. So all we're going to do is we're going to be taking all this excess sinew from our beef filet. So all I'm going to do is now is just use my knife and make small incisions on the side and I'm just gonna work to the end and remember the wife does the, the knife does most of the cutting for you so basically just hold on to the meat let the knife work its way so as you can see nice fatty chunks there coming out as we continue cleaning this beautiful piece of meat so remember the bits we are taking out at this time are very much the chewy bits it's always a bits at a Hard to, t hard to chew when you're enjoying your steak. So this is the reason why we take them off before we actually get into cooking it. All right, so just gonna take a little bit of those nice fatty chunks off. So remember key ingredients to picking good filet for this dish. Always try and get a filet that's uh, it's got a nice color to it, not too much sinew on it, not too much trimming that will actually inconvenience you from having your beautiful steak. As well, always make sure that the, that the consistency and the texture of the steak is nice and firm. As you can see with this one, you know, you could turn it around and it just holds its shape really well. So now all we're going to do now is now get to the cutting bit. So all I like to do now is show you how to chunk it. So I, will, I normally like to go with, the, thick, with the, the thickness, the same size as the thickness of the last bit of my knife. So all I do is I measure it out to that point, turn my knife upright, and then just slice through. So as you can see, nice beautiful chunk, same thing for the rest. So another one from there, we're going to cut that through. So as you can see, nice beautiful even size chunks. And last but not least, those three now. So we're just going to get rid of that. Okay, so to this very, very simple technique of uh, seasoning your meat before it goes on the pan, I like to always have it standing upright. So before we, that goes on to our hot pan, all I'm going to do is grab some salt. 
Just nice drizzle of salt on top. All right, and always remember if your meat is still bloody or it's still dripping a bit of water, always pat it dry. Make sure it's completely dry when it gets to this stage. I'm just going to turn those beautiful chunks around like that. Nice sprinkle of salt on the top. Right, very, very simple. So now to back to our hot pan, I'm just going to bring the temperature a little higher. And we're just going to drizzle a bit of olive oil in there. So among the things that I'm going to show you today is I'm going to illustrate some techniques of getting your steak right. So we're going to work with three different cooking temperatures. We're going to work first with a, uh, a very medium rare one. We're going to work with a medium one and then we're going to work with a well done one. So we're just going to get the oil. Just make sure to give your pan a swirl always just to make sure you've got enough oil covering your pan. And I'm just going to grab a board here. So remember, I'm just going to show you some searing techniques of, uh, of how to seal your meat first of all before cooking it right to the stage you want to serve. So once the pan is nice and smoky, let's bring the temperature to about medium and all I'm going to do is place those beautiful chunks of meat in there. And all we're going to do is we're going to sear them on each side for about a minute and a half. We're going to take them out, we're going to rest them. And then I'm going to take you through the process of how to get each one perfectly cooked. All right. So remember, uh, just let them sear like that on a pan. Once your heat is up, just drop it a little lower. So remember just to, for checking purposes, always have your pan a little smoky before the meat goes in. Remember, you want to cook it the fastest way in the shortest time possible. Right, so we're just going to turn those beautiful chunks over, as you can see, nice beautiful brown colors on the top. Then we're also going to sear on the other side for about a minute and a half, and that's going to come out. So remember that meat hasn't cooked through, we're just searing it on each side just to get the colors in there. And then we're going to get, get take them back onto the pan a little later after we've cooled them off, and I'll take you through the process, okay? So as you can see, nice beautiful colors on all three chunks there. Remember this, this is basically a stage to just color your meat. Right, so as you can see, nice beautiful brown color on both sides. Right, so we're just going to put this pan on the side a little bit, let it cool off. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make your red wine sauce. So we're going to be working with a bit of beef stock here. A bit of red wine. I recommend dry red is always the best one to go with. And then I'm also going to be working with some rosemary, some sage, some teriyaki, some oyster sauce, some black pepper and some salt of course just for seasoning. Right so a pan is on the go here very low heat I'm just gonna bring it to a little medium there. So for this process, we're not going to really incorporate any oil, any oil or cooking oil in it. It's just going to be reducing the sauce. So all I like to start with is some stock. Remember, we're just going to let that reduce. So I'm going to go with about half a glass or about two thirds of a glass. Then I'm just going to go in with uh, some of my rosemary. So I'm just going to break, just going to break that into two gonna reserve that for later so a bit of rosemary in there remember this is a point where we actually start infusing our flavors before we really start building the sauce and then I've got also a bit of sage there some fresh sage so you can see nice beautiful gray leaves there fresh just gonna go with four pieces in there Right, so at this stage, all you're doing is basically bringing it to the boil. You actually just want to infuse the flavors of your herbs in there with a bit of the stock. To that, I'm going to add some red wine. Right, so basically, I'm just going to let this uh, simmer at high heat. Remember, the idea is to get it a little thick as fast as possible. So I'm just going to let that keep going. And then to that, I'm going to add a bit of teriyaki sauce about a tablespoon 
and then and also a tablespoon of oyster sauce. Right, so remember this stage, we're basically just building the sauce, we're just getting all the flavors in there. We're just going to allow that to continue cooking. Remember, we want it to reduce. Uh, you, if, you, if you're trying to make the sauce a little faster, there's different techniques to thicken it a little quicker. You can always work with a bit of honey, you can work with some cornstarch with a bit of water, but we're gonna avoid those for this particular recipe. Right, so this is now going to reduce for about another 10 to 15 minutes. So definitely keep, keep a, a, a lookout for it. Remember, you don't want it to thicken too fast. And while we let that go, we're gonna jump into a small commercial break. And when we come back, I will show you what the sauce looks like. We're gonna go straight back to our meat and I'm gonna show you how to check for different cooking temperatures. And then we're just gonna go straight to the serving and the plating. See you in a short while. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are missing out or missed out on what we were doing earlier, we were, we were actually working on some nice chunks of beef here and some jus that's actually cooking now. So I'm just going to recap on what, you, what we were doing before we took our break. So in the pot here, I have some oyster sauce, some teriyaki sauce, some beef stock and some red wine. I also have four leaves of sage and one spring of rosemary. So basically this has been reducing really well. So we've been, uh, we've been reducing that on high heat for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm just going to show you something with the texture. So we're just going to give that a nice mix and I'm just going to show you some checkpoints for your sauce. So I'm just going to put a dollop on my plate here and I'm just gonna let it run to the bottom. And as you can see, Nice, nice, nice consistent te uh, texture there, nice and thick. So among the beautiful stages of looking at your sauce and being able to make sure that it's thick enough and it's good enough to serve with your beef, I'll actually illustrate this two ways. So basically what you could do is you could take a nice clean spoon and all you do is run your spoon through the sauce and turn it around and then run your finger right across. So what you're looking for is that, that consistent layer that just stays thick as it is right now. Those are very good checkpoints to make sure your sauce is thick enough. And another one is just put a bit of it on your plate. See, just keep timing and see how slow it rolls right around your plate. And as you can see, this is slow enough, it's thick enough, it's good enough to go. Right, so small uh, checkpoints when making your sauce just to make sure it's nice and thick enough and now we're just going to slide right into the main event for today which was basically our steaks so remember this was seared on each side for about a minute and a half after sprinkling some uh, salt on top of each so the idea was basically just to get those beautiful nice brown you know, those nice brown marks on top of our steak. As you can see, our steak is now rested, still holding its shape. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play with the steaks three ways. And by that, I am going to, by, by that I mean we are going to cook them three different stages. So I'll be able to show you how exactly to be able to time your steak in reference to the, 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 recommended, the recommended temperature that your guests like their meat. So we're just going to let that pan heat up quickly. And so the first one we're going to go with, because it takes a little longer, we're going to go with the well done. We're going to work our way backwards to, towards the medium. And last but not least, we're going to be doing the medium rare. Okay, so I'm going to start with, uh, let's go with this nice big chunk here. Okay, so we're just going to let that heat up. Our sauce is nice and ready. We are just going to give that some time to cool off. In the meantime, I'm just going to grab another pan 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly saute our vegetables. Just going to make sure they're just crispy, they're just colored, but they're not cooked right through. And for that, I'm going to be using the element at the front here. So this is just a quick flash fry, flash, uh, flash fry way of doing your vegetables. Very, very quick and simple. So all I'm going to be incorporating in there is a bit of olive oil. I'm going to use a bit of sesame seed just for the, just for the color. All right, so on this pan, just gonna drizzle a bit of olive oil in there. Just gonna let that heat up really well. All right, and our pan is nice and hot, nice and smoky. So all I'm going to do is grab my piece of steak there. I'm just gonna let that sit on the steak. So we are going to be cooking that to meat to well done. So that's going to be cooking for about uh, six to eight minutes. Uh, in between, just before we get that out, we're gonna go with our second piece, which we're gonna cook for between four and six minutes to medium. And then for the medium rare piece, we're gonna throw that last and we're gonna cook that for between two and four minutes. All right, so while our pan heats up on the other side, I'm just going to throw in my green beans. Remember that's going at high heat. So our steak is nicely cooking through as you can be able to see from the sides. It's nice and grey from the sides, still nice and pink on the middle. So that's all the signs we're looking for. So what we're looking for is a nice even colour from the bottom of the pan or rather from the surface of the pan and the steak coming right up. So I'm just going to show you as we go. So as you can see the rings are just now beautifully starting to form. This is still a little far. So remember this is cooking at medium to low temperature. You don't want to cook it too fast and brown the outside. You want the heat to go right inside. So we'll just let that keep going. Swirl your pan a few times. Just make sure it's not stuck to the bottom. All right, and on this end, I've got another pan going. So I'm just going to give those a nice little toss. Just go in there with our colored peppers. Remember, we are just searing them. We are not cooking them through. We want to serve them with a bit of a bite. Right, so just to toss them, get those uh, colors going. We're probably going to add a bit of olive oil in there. All right, so basically what we're looking for is a beautiful char kind of effect to the vegetables. We're not cooking them till they're mushy. Remember, we're gonna serve them with a bite. All right, and that is about done. Just gonna take that off the heat. In the meantime, our steak is nicely browning. I'm just gonna turn it now. So that's been cooking for about three to four minutes on one side, turned it once more, cook it for another three to four minutes on the other side. So we're just going to get our plates ready at the front here. And I'm just going to show you some techniques of plating that we're going to be playing with today. So while our steak is on the go, we're just going to let that keep going. And all we're going to do is we're going to start off with our sauce. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of dollops of sauce right on the plate like that. Remember, you can be as creative as you feel. You don't have to go with the technique that we are showing you. You can come up with your own. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do them a little different like that so that you all can be able to see it from home and be able to see the differences with the sticks once they're done. So I'm just going to play around with that. Right, so nice, easy techniques. As I said, I'm just playing with my spoon. So the three different patterns is three different patterns that we are setting up on our plate so that you can be able to tell the steaks as they come out, be able to tell one from the other. Right, so this is about done. So just to time that, we're gonna go with our piece that we're gonna be cooking to medium. We're gonna introduce that onto the pan. So remember, these are all cooking at intervals of two minutes. So as I said earlier, the well done went in first. 
As you can see, nice beautiful colors. So remember the medium one is gonna cook at slightly a lower timing than the, than the well done. And the medium rare, similarly a little shorter in cooking time than the medium to well, or rather the medium rare as well. So now we're just going to take our first piece of the pan here. Just gonna grab a knife. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp. All right, so for the first piece that was well done, we're gonna take that out, we're gonna let that rest. It's gonna give that a few seconds before we cut. So remember this was a medium chunk that we are going with now. So remember this is going to be on the pan for three minutes on each side. Total time of uh, three minutes. So total time cooking six, about six to seven minutes. Right, so you're just gonna turn that, give that the first turn. Then I'm just going to slice this so that you, ladies and gentlemen at home, you can be able to see what it looks like on the inside. Right, so this is still a little pink. We're still going to put that on the heat again. I'm just going to time them so that we are able to serve them all at the same time. Right, so always just give that a little swirl around your pan. Get that extra heat to go through there. Right, so that's going at medium heat. In the meantime, I'm just going to plate our veggies. So remember, you can serve this any way you like. For, for, for demonstration purposes, just for today, we're just going to make it as simple as you can see now. So basically in the pan here, I have some colored peppers, some French beans that we just sauteed in some olive oil. Very simple, very quickly cooked. So this is all served nice and crispy. Right, so our vegetables are on the pan now. So we're just monitoring our sticks as we go. So remember the first chunk we did, that we're gonna be serving well done. So we're resting it once more. And now I have one nice, beautiful medium piece that's on the go now. And just before that comes out, I'm going to introduce the last bit, which is medium rare. So this is going to be cooking between three and four minutes total cooking time, so about two minutes on each side. And if you're just catching up with us now, remember this was seared for one, one and a half minutes on each side earlier, just to give it a nice brown color on the outside and a crispness to it. In the pan there, what we have is one chunk of steak that we're going to be serving medium. So that's about two minutes away. And the other piece is actually going to be served medium rare. So that's cooking about two minutes on each side. So this is going to be cooking the shortest time possible compared to the rest. Right, so two minutes on one side, as I mentioned. We're gonna do two minutes on the other. And our nice, beautiful medium is now done. We're just gonna set that aside, give it a bit of time to rest. So now going back to the well done, I'm just going to give that a nice slice right through. Remember this, we rested again because we don't want it to get too tough and our pan was too hot. So all I do when I'm looking for beautiful, well done, so this is now, as you can see, nice and medium on the inside. So all I do is cut it open and then put it back on the pan. So this allows you to not overcook your steak, first of all, allows you to get some beautiful colors even when you're looking for that doneness to well done. Remember, well done is not necessarily about cooking it till it's very dark and almost not colorful as well, not presentable. It's only about the timings. All right, so this is a medium that we have on our board. And this is a medium rare that we have now coming off our board. It's gonna give that some time to rest. So I'm going to start with the slicing the medium one. Then I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the inside. So as you can see, nice beautiful pink color on the inside there. So that's almost done. And now for the medium rare, so this is pretty much the one that's cooked that's in the smallest time, the least time possible. And you can see the different shades of color there. So as you can see, much lighter from the medium rare, a little darker towards the, uh, towards the medium, and much darker towards the well done. 
So this has now seared for about two minutes on each side. I'm just going to turn those around. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, nice, simple ways of making your steak. So as I said, the one we're going to plate first is a medium rare. So I'm just going to put those beautiful chunks right in the middle there. And then on the other end, we're going to be putting the medium. So that's just going to go like that, like that. And last but not least, we have a bit of the well done that is now searing off on the pan. We're just going to give that one more toss. And basically with this as well, I'm going to rest it for a little, for a few seconds and then we're just going to plate it. I'm also going to slice it a little bit so that you can see the color on the inside. So coming back to what we were doing, ladies and gentlemen, we had some beautiful sauce on the side there. We had one nice chunk of uh, beef fillet that we cut three ways and we cooked it three ways as well so that you can get the idea of how best or how... How, how simple it is to actually cook your meat to your guest's preference, right? Right, so the well done is now nicely cooked. So now total cooking time for that between 8 and 10 minutes. Right, so I'm just going to move those to the board on the table here. And then I'm just going to turn off my heat. Right, so very, very simple technique of doing your beef. I'm just going to slice that so that you can see the color in the center. So as you can see, still nice and juicy, cooked right through, no traces of blood whatsoever. Very, very perfectly cooked piece of beef there. But as you can see, they're all nicely gray on the inside, cooked right through, not too overcooked as well. So with the well done, I'm just going to go with those right at the front there. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, for those who missed out on the show, or rather missed out on the two parts or to the three part show that we've been doing today, we were actually working on a very, very simple beef technique, uh, a, a simple way of doing your beef at home. We went through three different chunks whereby I was able to show you the colors, the textures and points to watch out for when making your own beef at home. So now just to finish that off, nice little bit of drizzle of our red, red wine sauce. So I'm just going to gently go around the top of each. Like that, nice generous drizzle right on top of each. And lastly, on the well done beef at the front there. Right, and a little bit over the vegetables. So ladies and gentlemen, as I introduced the dish earlier, a very simple beef with red wine sauce. Um, in front of you, you have three different uh, styles of cooking the beef in relation to the cooking temperatures. So from the right or from your left would be medium rare. In the center would be well done. And to my left or to your right would be the medium. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure to bring this beautiful dish to you today. I'm happy for those who tuned in today. I hope you've been able to take a few pointers today on how to be able to cook your meat. And remember, it's always polite to ask your guests before you do their steak. Ask them for the cooking temperatures they would like. There are some people who like their meat a little underdone. Some like it a little overcooked. I won't insist that you stick with your own technique of making it. Always listen to your guests. Remember, steak is a very delicate dish. It's a beautiful cut of meat that a lot of people like to be served in different techniques and different ways. So from here at the studios, it's been me, Chef Andy. I've been your host for today. You have been tuned in to Dinner Guide. We're now going to just sign out and uh, definitely it'll be a pleasure seeing you on the next episode very soon. It's been a pleasure doing this beautiful dish with you today. So from my end, it's been a pleasure hosting the show today and definitely going to see you soon. Have a lovely day. Mm -hmm.